a specific technique for yeah a specific uh, specific technique for um, a arthroscopic assisted TFC oh, TFC foveal tear repair. Um, but I think before, while we're getting set up over here, I just want to talk about a, a couple of things. Who, who is a therapist here? Okay, great. So we got like maybe 50% awesome. And who is a fellow or a resident? Okay, so we got some fellows. Who has done a wrist arthroscopy before? So a lot of the fellows and residents have not. Okay. Um, and who has used a nanoscope before? And who, who uses it regularly in their practice? Okay, so some people have used it. A lot of people have not used it. So the, the, arthro, the Arthrex nanoscope is a 2.0 millimeter uh, disposable arthros, arthroscopic um, camera. It looks directly ahead currently. So most of the scopes we use have a 30 degree angle to them or a 70 degree angle. So you can kind of look around the corner. The nanoscope is, is super small, so it's easy to maneuver. It's also a little bit flexible, so they do have a cannula you can put it through that does give you about a 15 degree angle. Um, but in general, the um, arthroscope looks directly ahead. Is that, am I? Yeah, okay, you guys can hear me now. <laughs> um, in general, doing arthroscopy, there's multiple portals that you can use for TFC repairs. Typically, we're using a 3 4 portal, which is between the, the EPL and the fourth compartment extensor tendons, and then also using a 6R portal, so the portal uh, directly radial to the ECU tendon. Um, other common portals that we'll use for the kind of bread and butter wrist arthroscopy would be the 4-5 uh, portal and then the 6U portal, which is a portal kind of around the other side of the ECU. Um, there are some volar portals as well. Don't forget about those for kind of unique situations. I think that um, I've, I've tried to do some prep work here already. Uh, hopefully this kind of projects okay. Are they going to be able to see the, the screen? Okay. So what I've done here is this patient already sort of had a, uh, a variant of a TFC tear. Um, we're going to try and show a, the ulnar tunnel approach to fixing a TFC. Uh, so this is a Arthrex system where we put a pin in through the ulnar aspect of the ulna up through the fovea. Um, I did it kind of blindly here, so it's probably not quite perfect. Usually for me, I would do it under fluoroscopic guidance to make sure the pin is exiting uh, directly in the fovea. Uh, they do have a guide we can do arthroscopically without the um, fluoroscope, but I'd probably use both in, in real life. And then <clears throat> through the tunnel, after placing the pin, we're going to ream over the pin, and then through that tunnel, we'll pay, place two sutures. Uh, or one suture and then a uh, suture lasso, and then that will allow us to create a horizontal mattress suture in the ulnar aspect of the TFC. So let's let's see how um, how well we did here. Um, so this is the the nanoscope here. You can see it's our disposable instrument, very small. The scope itself is two millimeters. Uh, I'm currently looking at the. Can you guys see this? Yeah, you see the screen. Okay. So this is the uh, the TFC tear over here. If we kind of maneuver back a little bit, things are a little swollen up because we've been sitting here watching it uh, for a while. But she does have a, a, this is the central TFC tear. She also has, so this is a degenerative tear just off the radial cartilage. You can see a central perforation in the TFC. And then this is more ulnarly or foveal tear, which we sort of created. And I've already uh, passed some sutures through here. Um, I passed a suture uh, and also a oh, suture lasso. Let's see if I can do. We've also created a, a second incision along the ulnar aspect of the uh, forearm and have already reamed. So I'm gonna see if I can put this um, Give me a little uh, irrigation, yeah. Let me see a little bit better here. So this isn't a true uh, foveal TFC tear, and so the, the TFC is not completely disconnected from the ulna, and so mobility under the TFC is a little limited. I think in a truly injured wrist, you would be able to 
maybe see this thing coming up through the fovea, but I'm underneath the TFC here. So I guess what I'm going to, um, I, I guess talking about preparation of these things first. So wrist arthroscopy can be done in a couple different ways, right? Dry arthroscopy or wet arthroscopy. I think most of us do wet arthroscopy, but there is a trend towards doing some dry arthroscopy. And there's potentially a couple benefits to doing arthroscopy without water, particularly in the, um, like a, if you're doing a scope in the setting of a distal radius fracture, um, which might be done for a couple of reasons, right? One, to check reduction. Two, to see if there's an associated TFC uh, tear that you want to fix. And three, to look at the scaphalunar ligament. And doing that without water in the traumatized setting may avoid like significant uh, fluid extravasation of the forearm. Um, after the three, four portals established, I've already done some shaving on the back of the wrist to kind of see things a little bit better. We don't have any outflow here. So um, there, there's still some things that normally I would have taken away so we could see better, but you can get a sense here of the, uh, the ulnar sided pathology. Um, Yeah, thanks. So here's her foveal TFC tear, and I'm kind of kind of manu maneuvering my probe there. You can see that there is the, fo the TFC is mostly detached from the fovea, and again, she does have or this patient. I don't know if it's he or she. I don't know why I'm saying she. Apologies for that. Does also have a uh, central perforation of the TFC. This would be more of a degenerative, degenerative tear. And then, te so testing for uh, foveal disruption of the TFC, the, the test is the hook test, right? So we're gonna put our hook, and I think we've lost a bunch of our traction, so apologies, the view is not quite as good. We've got some stress relaxation going on, but um, you're gonna put the hook of your probe around the ulnar aspect of the tear and kind of maneuver the tear into the wrist. And again, this isn't a, tr a true foveal detachment, but if this was, we would be able to kind of pull this whole thing into the wrist like so. So what we've done now is um, we've already used a couple things. Um, can we show this camera real quick? Can you hold that scope for me? So, the, the steps of this ulnar tunnel procedure are first, a K-wire goes up from the, uh, where are we at here? So K-wire goes up through the ulna into the fovea. And there, for, for today's purposes, there is a um, arthroscopic guide you can use. And again, normally I probably wouldn't use this. I would use um, a fluoroscan. There is a fluoroscan if you want to try that instead, but this may kind of expedite just putting the pin in, in, a, in a place where you can see it inside the wrist, even if it's not perfect. Then over the, over the pin, the, this reamer goes over the K-wire from the ulnar border of the, uh, the subcutaneous border of the ulnar up into the fovea where you've already placed your guide wire. And this is three millimeters. Um, so you have, now you'll have a three millimeter tunnel from the subcutaneous board of the ulna up into the fovea. Through that tunnel, you're going to use this instrument, which um, is a straight suture lasso and a fiber stick is going to be placed up through the, through the lasso, bend it over the end of the lasso about one inch. And then you're going to, through the tunnel, stab this through the TFC. And if you twist it a, a bunch of times, you'll see that it, the, the fiber stick gets kind of stuck on the TFC and then you can grasp it uh, after you remove your suture lasso. And then through the same tunnel, you're gonna pass a um, nitinol wire suture uh, lasso loop, and then you're gonna grasp that as well. And so right now, what we've done, I can get rid of this thing, right? Yeah, is we've, I've already passed the fiber stick. Let's see, turn that up a little bit like that. And, and the nitinol loop wire. And so I'm gonna, yeah, and you wanna go back to the, uh, the scope video now. And so what I'm gonna do is pass the fiber stick back through the suture la uh, loop, suture lasso, and then pull that out through the ulnar tunnel. And now I've got, both limbs of my fiber, uh, fiber stick now going out 
the ulnar side. And if you're not gonna see them too well, but you can see when I pull on them, how the TFC tensions back down to the ulna fovea. And so that's the kind of the, the look we're going for here. And then the completion of the procedure is, if you've ever put an anchor in, is, is super easy. All we're gonna do is drill a hole in the ulna, pass these sutures through the eyelet of a swivel lock suture anchor, and then seat the suture anchor into the ulna, which I don't think that, I guess we can do it, just to show what it looks like under the scope here. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna tension those one at a time here and then cleat them onto the suture anchor. And then I'm gonna impact this. Give me a little actually counterforce on the forearm, thanks. And once you get the anchor down to the bone, take the orange plastic off the anchor and they're gonna seat the anchor the rest of the way. And then there we go. So now we've, and you can't really see the sutures too well, but the, the TFC is kind of tensioned back down to the ulnar fovea. So again, this is sort of like, um, you know, we're doing this low tech without fluoroscopy, so it's probably not quite quite perfect, but I think that this is kind of a cool technique for a couple of reasons. One, it's all arthroscopic. Um, after you've, the hardest part is pace, placing the wires in the right spot. And I always have, I, I guess, since I've graduated fellowship, I've done an arthroscopic assisted approach to fixing TFCs, because to me, the, the most important part is where the sutures go through the TFC. And if you have excellent visualization of that, you're going to get the TFC repair, repaired in the right spot. And so to me, like passing the wires arthroscopically makes a ton of sense. You can you see exactly where they're going. You make sure that they're in the right spot to tension the TFC appropriately. If you're kind of doing an outside in and it's a tight fit and you have a big needle, or you don't have the right tools, things can be a little tricky. Obviously, one of my partners, Bill Kleinman, is a maestro of doing open TFC repairs. So he would argue with me fervently about that point. But um, I think that this is, this is a cool way to do it. Um, and one, one t technique of many, so play around with it in the uh, in the lab. I guess in terms of uh, you know post op after TFC repair, uh, and I've placed these patients in a long arm splint in some degree of uh, supination, probably like forty five to sixty degrees, um, and then I'll let them move the elbow, the fingers, and the wrist immediately, but I'll hold the forearm uh, for four to six weeks, depending on how kind of unstable things were. I love to hear other people's approaches to post op rehab. Dr. Bamberger. Yeah. Yeah. So six or eight weeks, eight weeks, maybe. Yeah. So um, I haven't been putting them in full supination. I think that um, kind of a mid range of supination is enough and it maybe leads to less of a supination contracture, but um, any other questions for me? I was, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, I think making these pretty tight is, is good. And the, the other thing about this, some, you know, the, the suture will tension until you, the suture anchor hits the bone and then the tensioning will stop. So, you know, you, if you, you will get a little extra tension as you're tapping the suture in. So be aware of that. Um, oh, I would put them in uh, neutral or supination. Yeah. Put the form of supination. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be like, I guess it depends on what the athlete is, but it's going to be, it's going to be like a six month recovery, probably. I mean, just the biology of this thing healing to the, to the bone is a long time. 